Good morning. Jess is here. She would say afternoon. Just unloading over here. Three. 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 One, two, three. <laughs> I'll throw you guys up here, get this unloaded, and then hammer down on the timeline. Yeah, you're good. Forks are clear. And then the land starts going up further back. I guess. Yeah. I, gotta, I, gotta, I really think I want to go further back. Get it down. I'm thinking of looping around, but we'll see. I'll, I'm, I'm, well, I'm just going to go around the back alley. Oh, okay. I'll, unless it's blocked there, and then you'll see me backing up all the way. But I've gone through the back alley, so. I almost broke my phone. Almost broke your phone? Yeah. All right, we are unloaded. Let's try this back alley. Where are you going, bud? regretting this. I love how you're regretting it. You're still going forward. Yeah. Can't regret it that much if you keep going forward. That's our room. Okay. How are you guys doing? Well, I had fresh popcorn inside <laughs> and I can smell it. <laughs> no, we're in Nelson. I didn't have enough time. I was able to get fresh popcorn. Unloaded in Nelson, and we really have to get to KMT before 2 p.m. normally to get loaded. Uh, we're about half an hour away, and it's 1.30 now, so they said they're going to wait and uh, load me today. So the sooner I get there, the happier they are, because the sooner they can go home. So. Oh yeah, he got all the way in here to unload his stuff. I'm a little worried about that. No, no, we're turning before that. We're okay. We're okay. And I saw down there when I drove by, it was clear down there. So, cool. The back alley did not bite us. It can bite you. I've had to back up a long way before to... through the alley.
Parts Buster. Who are you gonna call? Parts Buster. It's a little funny. Alright. Well, that's not gonna work there either. Let's go. As you were slack and I can't go. Well, I can't very well cross the railroad, so I guess I'll just stop here. far enough ahead that the car can get around. All right, I'm okay with parking my nose on the railroad. I'm just not okay with leaving the trailer. I like the town of Nelson, the city of Nelson. I think it's a city, right? It's, it's a really nice little tourist trap. What's this, some kind of protest? All the tents. Grounds over there? That's all I can think of, just some kind of protest. Okay. <laughs> they okay. Literally just moved to the other one. Yeah, they moved from one spot to the other. Okay. As long as you do it and let me go by, I guess I'm okay with it. Oh. Well, if you haven't been to Nelson a while, this light, well, this, this intersection, intersection yeah. has changed. No more four-way stop. Only one lane going through instead of a two. It used to be southbound two-lane four-way stop, which got complicated. And I like this new intersection so much better. And yeah, we got the red light. Sometimes you gotta wait a little longer, but it became a real cluster with a four-way stop during rush hour. And now the traffic flows a lot smoother. Okay, already said we're headed to KMT. Get that loaded. Deliver that in the morning. See what we get on the way back home. We're only delivering at 11 a.m., so. I think he's gonna shoot us back empty. Very likely going back empty if we're unloading at 11 a.m. Yeah. I think he kind of hinted at that already. Unless they unload us really quick and he can get a small load on. So this will be a six day week because we started on Sunday afternoon. We'll probably get home Friday night. I think it's more important to, for him to get you to the Kootenays early. For the next load. For the next load. Yeah. I'd rather do empty. So it means we'll have Saturday, Sunday off, and then head back here on Monday. Um, I'll see what time he wants us back on Monday, if we're going to load Tuesday morning or Monday afternoon. Um, we might leave Monday very early in the morning, like at 5 a.m. or something. Of course, that's if all the plans going to the weekend work out. <laughs> That's only if we can get loaded tonight. 
Well, afternoon? Yeah, afternoon. I know I said morning earlier, but afternoon. Well, I wasn't here to correct you. The whole reason why this cup holder is here was to stop this from crunching my phone into the door. Oh, okay. You moved Jess's cup holder. And I almost broke my phone. Because now the phone, or now, so you'll just have to hang up. Oh, that defeats the whole purpose. Uh-huh. <laughs> I gotta find a solution for it. I think I have one, but I gotta, gotta try it out. Get another cup holder. Good. Just put other stuff in it. Well, even if it's like see-through like this, I just put it. Yeah. Okay, we got that at um, Flying J. We have to stop there and get another one. That's probably the easiest solution. Yeah, I could try passing this guy. It'd be better for me if I did, but I would really be pushing it. I'd have to speed to get it done. So, we will sacrifice. His blinker's broken, though. So, how are those logs held onto, onto that truck? If you guys ever following a logging truck, remember how those logs are fastened to that trailer. <laughs> There are two cables around all those logs. And they're just cinch tight with a cable. Just a cable and two boomers. Two cables, two boomers, that's it. And they're not even attached to the trailer. The logs are just strapped to each other with two cables. They are loose on that trailer. Yep. Completely loose, friction only. So, and they put a little red flag at the end of it to make sure the overhanging logs are visible. So that's there for your safety. So if you see the logs in the center bouncing around, they are completely loose on there. Friction holds them in there because of all the bark on these logs. They don't want to move. You see them bouncing up there though. If you hit a pothole big enough, there's no crown on that, so those center ones are completely loose. That small, that, that small center one that's bouncing, completely loose. Nothing is holding that in there. It's literally just sitting loose on top. So that one, potentially, if you hit a big enough bump, could slide backwards. So if you guys have ever watched Final Destination, mind your following distance. Or at least focus on what the logs are doing. If all of a sudden one of the logs looks like it's moving, back up. There's supposed to be a crown. A crown, I mean, a, like a TP on the top. So that all the logs have... Uh, all the logs on the top have uh, that cable pushing down on them. But this guy's got the opposite. It's got a, a, a little little dent instead of a pyramid, upside down pyramid instead of a bump. Because of that, there's a couple of logs that are completely just loose hanging out right up there. I don't know how visible that is for you guys, but the wide angle lens, it might not be that super visible. following the Kootenai River from Nelson down to Klesnikoff Mass Timber. Lush green everywhere. I love this time of year. This is why I like spring. The lush greenness, the lushness of it. Bugs are starting to come out, so the perfect time of year is almost over.
11 kilometers to go. Given us enough time for one hour to load, one hour to tarp. Should take less than that, hopefully. But if if it takes over two hours to get this loaded and out of here, then we are in trouble for our timeline. It's a pretty tight timeline. Wide load, so you can't drive at night if it's too wide. Uh, this place has never been more than 10 feet wide. Yeah, so it should be. Okay. So it should be simple flag and lights and go. You ever have some spare time? If you remember, I know I keep forgetting. If you could print out the new permit, that'd be great too. I'll remind you to do it. Yeah, even if you remind me to do it, and then I'll remind you to do it again, and then you'll remind me. Eventually, one of us will print it because this permit's good till June. Things I'm so short, I have to stand on the bed. To print, yeah. To print. <laughs> so it's a three month permit. We have to unpack a printer every time we want to use it and then repack it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> printer actually takes up a lot of room in here, but it's very handy very handy. We don't cross the border anymore, so it's not that handy anymore. But sometimes people only give you one copy of the invoice and you need one for you and one for the customer. Make a photocopy. So I'm keeping it in here. Don't use it as often, but when you when you need it, it's just super handy. Yeah, we thought about getting rid of it and just demanding two copies before we leave. But a couple places just don't do that, right? So it's, it's just easier just to have it in here. more scenic than going over Bombay. It is. If you guys are traveling Highway 3 and are just trying to get from east to west or west to east and you have a little spare time, don't go over Kootenai Pass and don't go over Bombay. Take 3A, take the ferry and go around that way. It's a bit of a detour. It'll take an hour longer, maybe two hours longer depending on the ferry. But the drive is so much more scenic. It's a free ferry. And, and, and you don't have to climb the huge Kootenai Pass. You 
get a boat ride instead. So as far as scenic and adventure and having fun, if the trip is part of your fun, take 3A, go through Nelson, and take the ferry and head back down to Creston that way. So from Castlegar to Creston, there's that detour. And you, if you don't want to go take the ferry, the other detour, you can take Strawberry Pass south on Highway 3B, go through Trail and Fruitvale and that way, meet back up in Salmo. And if you want to do both, take Strawberry through Rossland, through Trail, Fruitvale, through Salmo, and then head north to Nelson from Salmo, and then take the ferry. You don't get this part of the trip, but you get a very scenic, very, very scenic drive. electricity dams along the river here between Nelson and uh, Castlegar too. I think there's four or five of them. Just dam after dam after dam. I think it's hard to count how many. Mm, it's even on Google Maps and stuff it's hard to see properly. The satellite. There's a lot of them. Definitely a lot of them. I know there's probably a map somewhere that actually shows them. I swear I saw exactly that load southbound. Exactly that load southbound when we were going to Nelson. Now that same load's going northbound. I wonder if we got to the scale and was something wrong. He has to go back and correct it. Maybe. It's the only thing I can think of. I'll do welcome to Klesnikov Mass Timber. Time of day that some of the people will be starting to go home, so watch out for cars. I don't see a forklift down here. I'm going to loop around. I don't know I'm here. You wish they had a uh, phone number you can call. Yeah. And then be like, "Hey, I'm down here." So Let's some places it. are like that. Where you do a loop around. If you guys are coming to Klesnikov for the very first time, you're pretty much forced to loop around. Come up over here. 
park alongside of the rocks. Never bus. We must have some guests. We must have some guests. Yep. Got some guests. Then you stop right over here, and chipping office is right now, kind of beside us, underneath that green roof there. Yeah, they must have brought up, bought some of this property or something. Yeah, up on the left-hand side there. Yeah. yeah. I'm not obeying the normal rules, but. You're, you're not normal. I've been here a million times and I know what is expected of me. Ah, Fork lifts back here loading. Perfect. Yeah, if I'll loop around, just let you know I'm here. All right. Well, like, hey, all he does is transfers. Yeah, he just transfers lumber from the main mill to over here. Sometimes doesn't he go down to the train? Yeah, and then sometimes they transfer to the train yard, but they do a lot less of that now. Yeah. More and more of the lumber mill lumber um, goes to uh, their own glue lamb. So this building in front of us is their glue lamb building. There must be two or one yeah. and two or two. There must be a couple tour groups. They're checking out the glue lamb is what they're doing. Yep. You can find it online if you're curious what projects they've done. Not all of them, but they're big. Uh, so I'm finding it very interesting. I think they're all um, Asians. I can't tell if Japanese or Chinese, but uh, Klesnikov has sold a lot of lumber to Japan. I'm wondering if they're looking at the feasibility of chipping finished blue lamb to Japan. That's why I'm thinking That's for the what housing. That kind of looks to me, yeah. right? Which would be awesome. It'd all be narrow enough to fit into a container. It would be, those would be fun loads to do. It'd just be running Highway 3. Yeah. But they would be, they what wouldn't be super heavy. They would max out on height before they would get overweight because they have to be container width. So. What if they load them into containers over here? Well, that'd be cool if they load them into containers here and then we just... Wouldn't that be easier than no tarping and untarping? That would be pretty, pretty cool if they did that. But they are building another plant, another building. Long these, by the airport. Yeah, these guys are expanding pretty quickly. Basically, they're making money and investing it all and investing more than they're making. It's a lot of fun to actually walk around here and you see where a lot of these are going. Well, you can Google you can it. You see the labels on, yeah, everyone has a label of where the destination is and you can Google the, the name of the place and all over Canada, all over the U.S. Yeah. A lot of fun. All right, so he says he'll be down here shortly to load us up. Well, they just paved that last week or a week yep, before? Yeah, last week. Last week. So slowly paving more and more and more. Used to have to load in such a mud hole over here, and that's all fixed now. sure what side he's going to load me from. Kind of centered here. It's a little awkward with the way they have it set up there right now. 
You're on the left side, I think. On the left side? You think that's mine? Yeah. In that case, I'm far too far left. Would you read, like, the 11, 12, whatever it is, county truck numbers? What am I doing with this? Should be further over then. Let's turn that radio off. It's distracting when you're trying to move. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll squiggle over further to the right then. If you think we're truck 16. Well, this is one, but I'm betting that's a different, different garage load, yeah. There's actually 11 and 12 back there. Yeah, that 11 12 has been there for a while, so I think you're wrong there. But you're right. And this 17, yeah. 19. I wasn't watching what our other truck numbers were. Is it? So hard to get the pup to get over. We'll get it there. We'll get it there. Jackknife it all up. I'm happy with this one. Alright. Nice and straight. There we go. Wait for him to come down and load us. This end in, and then front back. Nice and straight. Eh, perfect. Perfect.
I bought my own safety harness and this little doohickey, a little extension makes it a lot easier to hook on to the uh, tether at the top. It's worth buying your own 200, it's like 200 bucks, give or take, yeah, on Amazon. Something like that, yeah. Although this one barely fits me, so keep size in mind. Okay. Head up. Roll of time. Coming through, coming through. Almost to the top, you wait. Okay. Do the same thing on the back one, and then we'll bungee everything together.
Sorry to that. In Canada, it doesn't have to say oversized load. It's fine if it says wide load or the red and white 
with a big D on it for over dimension. Canada, DOT is not too picky about it. I know some states like Washington, if it doesn't say oversize, they'll pull you in. Personal experience there. If you look over to the front trailer, it's not much of a wide load, but it's a wide load. There we go. Trim out the back here, or the side too. And then we're done. So we'll strap the rest down. Thank you guys for watching. We are out of here. You guys rock. Adios.